It's a great honor and a privilege to introduce um, Hannah Safran Persov. And Hannah is going to be doing something very unique. You're going, you have the original letters and postcards that were sent to your parents when they were in Shanghai from Poland and from Japan. And these are the original translation of the original letters. So Hannah, thank you so much. My pleasure. Okay, the first letter, which was actually a letter, uh, was sent by my Zaidi um, Abraham, which is my father's father. So this was Uncle Joe's um, and my father's father from Slonim on the 28th of April, 1941. Okay, he writes like this. Dear children, Itcha and Yoska, we have just received your letter, which you wrote in the Moscow Vladivostok train, Tuesday the 1st, in the evening. We read your letters, as well as all the postcards that you have written from your journey, from Minsk, Kovna, Kaunas, and Moscow, that thank God we all received. I told Mommy, even prior to your leaving Vilna, that you will not spare letters for us on your way, and this is how it happened. We cannot hold back our joy. I can see you, my dear children, among those several words, which I've read in front of Mommy, and I am drowning in tears, and Mommy is as well, that you are in such a situation. Hashem should help you, that you will safely get to America as fast as possible. Even before you left, I already sent a letter to Binyamin in America that he should help you in getting from Japan to America. I have written to him that Hamatchil b'mitzvah omrim ligmor, and I reckon that he will surely do so. And he's referring to the fact that Uncle Binyamin sent them the money in Moscow to get to Japan. So that's what he's saying to who Hamatchil that he started the. Malachan, he should finish. Everything with us is, thank God, in order. And now, my dear children, I must tell you a little why we didn't come to say farewell to you. Isn't it that two children are going away so far, and only Hashem knows if we will see each other again? How is it that no one came to say farewell? It's the same case as Yaakov Avinu told Yosef, Va'ani b'od va'ami pada aram. And as Rashi HaKadosh comments there, the same happened to me. I prefers buried Rachel by the wayside and was unable to bury her properly at Hashem's request. So now I, similarly, could not get to say shalom to you as you might have expected. I wanted to tell you before so that you should not suffer. But now, Baruch Hashem, when everything is already behind us, I can tell you. I had the same illness that I had two years ago, but from the front side to the right and across the chest. I was lying in bed and I didn't have all any will to eat. I was several times in a hospital and the paramedic told me I should wait until the doctor comes to check on my illness. The doctor came and looked at me. He asked me how old I was. I told him 60, although I told him a year more. He told me that no, I had to be older than that. You can imagine what I looked like. He gave me something to apply and he told me to come back in three days. It means on Friday. On Friday, I had, thank God, opened on its own, some kind of ulcer or wound. Afterwards, I had to go several times a week for bandaging. The first two times, the bandaging caused extra extraordinary suffering, but not that much after that. Several weeks passed this way, and the frost was extraordinary, so Mommy had to leave me under the arms in the hospital. While I was lying in bed, the Milazevich girls sent me some stuff, and after that, Moshe brought me, that's another son. All of that helped me in my recovery. I have 
had what to strain to my heart. Because of all that, you have to understand that I couldn't go to see you, and Mommy also couldn't go from home because of me. If you were going now, we would surely go to see you. We cry all the time why we didn't have the honor to say farewell to you. Now, my dear children, we thank you for your letters to us. Furthermore, you should not forget us and often write to us. Some news from Slutton. All the people who do not work and sit in the shuls and flats are being sent to the Lida area. In Lida, they are being given apartments and they must go to work there. Already have gone. For us, it would probably won't happen because Moshe and David work and they have stamped passports. Those are the two brothers of my father. Regards from Moshe and David. They work under, it wasn't clear, and are surely fine. Thank Hashem, we are Baruch Hashem fine. Warmest regards from Mommy, from your father Avram, who hopes to see you again. Why aren't you writing what is happening with your friend Yeshayahu? Moshe has praised him a lot in hopes to see you in Japan. Moshe has brought from Vilna a letter from America. And then it's something else that was not so clear. And this uh, Yeshayahu later, we'll see, is in Japan and writes to my father in Shanghai. Okay, that's the first letter. It's very emotional. Very emotional. And... Um, what was very uh, moving for us was to see the connection between the two families, that he wasn't well, and my mother's sisters it's came to visit home. him, which means that both families really were close to each other, where they had run away from Gavarov and from Australanka. Okay, the next letter from Slunin is this one. This is um, June 12, 1941. This is also from the same person, from my father's father, Abraham. Okay, this is the postcard. So it's your, your grandfather? Yes, my grandfather. This is this side. This is written in Shanghai. And this is, as you can see, how it's written in Hebrew, written script, uh, Yiddish. In Yiddish, in right. Hebrew okay, dear children, it's not clear what this means. Receive the package safely, of which you wrote on the May 12th. You need to have already some pictures of us in Shanghai. We are very glad that you, Yuska, are writing that in that Itcha entered the house where all the yeshiva bachram are and that he has at least what to eat and what to study. And you, Yaska, will also not be forsaken. Only that everyone should be healthy. This shows how much they really knew what was going on with them. And you will now come to America with no worries. We have today received a postcard from Mendel, that's Uncle Aaron, he is writing about the papers which Binyamin, Uncle Ben Safran, has attached, but we know everything already. Binyamin has done everything he could do. Now with what you, Yusk, are writing about are coming to Shanghai, but now there's nothing to speak about. They even hope that maybe they would come to Shanghai. We are, thank God, all healthy. Quarter regards from everyone and David. Write about what's happening with the Rebbe and about Chaver Yeshayahu. Again, he's asking about this good friend of my father's. For me, your father, who thanks you that you write us often and ask you to continue to do the same. Let us hear from you. And then he writes them, my other uncle who lived in Canada, his address, which they obviously had asked for. The next is not really a letter. It's I almost threw this out. It was in two pieces. It's just like a little tiny um, piece of paper. Now this is the only uh, little note from my mother's father, okay? He's Mayor Yehuda. And he writes like this. Uh, I don't have the date here. Rosh Chodesh Sivan. So it must be also like in May, okay? Uh, 
Tabasya Basha. We're all fine, Baruch Hashem. And we should hear the same from you. And he's writing, uh, he can't write too much because his eyes are bothering him. And um, he's having it treated. And I'm asking, what is with the brothers Shafran? For me, your father, Neya Label Mirmazevich. And here again we see how they knew that my mother was uh, together with the two Safran brothers. Also, you see how the respect is, like how she writes, from me, your father. And, and even in the other letter, how much the, the father is almost apologizing to the children. Okay, the next one is from um, my mother's brother. I'll try to find the original here. Okay. We think it's from a place called Maychek, which is near Slonim, probably also going to the east. This is the side. And now you'll see how tightly this is written. <laughs> they had to get as much as possible inside. Right, and this little, and it's amazing that it got there, this little piece of paper during the war. Gay vase, as they say. <laughs> to my dear and beloved sister Basia, we are Baruch Hashem all healthy. Hashem is Baruch should help us further to hear the same from you. Last week I sent you a postcard and today I'm writing a second one because you haven't written to us. I don't understand why, but I'm doing my best and writing you every day a postcard. Unfortunately, of course, we never got the postcards that were sent. Something will reach you. No news at, at our end. What's at your end? How is your travel to America? They all think they're going to America afterwards quickly from Shanghai. I have written to Sarah Rivka, this is the Brooks family, Sarah Rivka Brooks, who sent my mother the $180 to go to, uh, to get onto the train in Moscow. About you and regarding fresh papers. Here he tells some more news, your balabasta, your chevet, Tarotsky got married on Rosh Chodesh Iyar, and Shadl was at was our house this week from Zarebik. They're not sure what name this is. Write how life is there and whether the refugee committee supports you enough to survive. No more news. Again, regards to the Shafrans. From me, your brother, Wolf Zev, uh, Yisrael Zev Milnazevich. And until we got these letters, we never realized how connected uh, the families were, how they knew what was going on one with the other. Um, okay, let's see which this one is. This is another one from her brother, 225, I'm trying to find the original. Okay, is this one? Okay, this is... Kungping Road, House 17. This is another one from her brother. This is the other side. My dear sister, Basha. This is also about uh, May 16th, 1941. We are fine. Hashem Yisbarach should help us further to hear the same from you. I have just received from you a postcard from Erev Pesach and I am replying to you on the spot. There can be no talk regarding that some of us should come to you or send you any books together with someone. It was definitely rejected outright. There are people who have all the permits in the best shape and still sitting in Vilna, meaning that not everybody got out, so I think that's why they probably felt like, how, why should we go to Vilna? We'll, we want, what will we be able to do once we get there? Maybe news, maybe news will come as time passes, but regarding your request, but in the meantime, no news. The letter that you sent to Mrs. Trusky for us we have received, 
and the second letter we have passed on to the internat. You know what that means. Um, I forgot the main thing. We all deserve a mazel tov. Uh, again, he talks about the wedding. Our balabasa married Saradovsky on Rosh Chodesh Eir. Um, these kind of questions she receives right on the day of her wedding with Saradovsky. Oh, she said, in your letter to her, you reminded her of your past talks and what to take to Saradovsky, to this family that she married into. And these kinds of questions she receives right on the day of her wedding with Saradovsky. We all laughed and thought you should have a chance to laugh too. No more news. Cordial regards from Shandel, that was her sister. She's been to us this week. A good and Shabbos from me, your brother. My regards to the Shafrans. Which this is interesting, which shows also with my other letters, that they weren't all together at the whole time. Like Shandel was someplace else and she was probably working and then she came home for Shabbos. So it's not really clear where where she was all this time. Okay, this is a letter from my sister's, my mother's sister, Rachel. Okay, this is this side of it. And this letter got, this postcard uh, got a little bit, you can see a little bit ruined here. Okay, this was sent also in April 10th, 1941. This is from Rachel, my mother's uh, sister from Slonim. Dear Sister Basia, we are, thank God, healthy. We should hear the same from you. Interesting how they all start saying It's already the last day before Pesach. Tata Avram is already making Badika's chametz, but believe me, everything reminds me about you. And they say that your fate is always as it should be, so far from us all. But is everything not the same? Hashem is everywhere. I am already writing the second postcard to you, to you, and I'll be glad if this postcard meets you already, not in Japan, but further. At home by us, there is no news. In your old place, there's a pair of boots still. But trust me, when you were there, I wasn't feeling that I was far away from home and that I wanted to be there more, and now I somehow don't want to go. My writing is laughable. You will probably receive it about two weeks after Pesach, but in any case, a freilich and Pesach and a kosher one, and regards to the Shafran brothers. From me, your faithful sister Rachel, who wishes that we all meet together in good health, write more often from me, Rachel. So here she tried to cheer her up, you know, telling us a you know, funny stories about her boots. Okay, this is um, from her other sister, Shana. Um, should say Rabbi Ashkenazi. How come I? Oh, I, I don't see that one. Oh, here, oh, yeah. I made a mistake. Okay. This one was actually addressed to Rabbi Ashkenazi. Okay, this one is very difficult to read. And it's a piece to. This is from my sister, my mother's sister, Shana. And this is, um, I don't think he could manage the dates on this one. <laughs> this is like very, maybe when we read it, we could see what. Um, my dear and beloved sister Basha, I have just received a postcard for you and I'm replying to you to outright. We are Baruch Hashem healthy and I received a letter from home this week, a postcard. Everybody is Baruch Hashem healthy, thank God. Hashem should help further. I traveled to our parents and was there for two weeks. So it seems that one or two of the sisters were staying someplace else. It's just not really very clear. Dear Basha, do not be upset that you are so far from us, that the time can bring healing. Can you understand, feel yourself smarter, not unhappy? Can you understand by yourself that before it gets better, it might be worse? However, for you, it can already be good, and I know that it will be good for you. Perhaps this postcard will not reach you in a good shape. I have no news at the moment. I know that in Mirza Hashem there has to be some work 
and if there's work, I will perhaps these two weeks work in the field. In the meantime, Basha, you know that work makes your life sweet. That's why we must all work. From me, your sister Shana. So it seems that they had to keep busy, and uh, like in my father's um, father's letter, where he writes that Moshe and David are working someplace, so they have papers. So it seems like the younger people had to do some kind of work so that they should also have money, but also to keep busy. Okay. Uh, now comes the letter from Shaya Laniente, my father's friend, who and eventually was a witness at my wedding. He came to Israel and he changed his name to Bar Natan, and I lost touch with him. I tried to find a Bar Natan, but I haven't been able to find him. Um, so this letter was one of the few letters that was actually written to my father, two letters from the same person. Okay, I think this is this one. Let's see, excuse me, how much is written on this letter. So this was written from uh, from Kobe, from Kobe, Japan. So here he not only wrote so small on the inside, but he even tried to make use of the outside. Okay, this was written, okay, I don't have the date here, because I don't think he was able to write the date, catch the date, the 16th, and why we didn't write down the date. It had to be in 1941, though. In order that I should not be disappointed, you should please write me everything in Lent. What's with your permits? I send my quarter of regards and special regards to Basha and Yoska. So he also knows who he's with. Your friend and relative, Yeshayahu Lenyenta, Bar Natan. Yesterday I sent you a letter. Have a good day. Expect a long letter. So it was two, uh, two letters. Now he's writing um, to um, Peril Yenta Rubel, who got married before my mother. So he's writing, Dear and respected bride, Peril Yenta Rubel, who is Rebbe Simanis, Firstly, for my deep heart, I wish you both a mazel tov. You should know that I definitely did not know about it. Let Hashem Yisbarach help you build your house on the mountains of Zion and rebuild Yerushalayim. Um, he seems a bit upset that he didn't know about, that the letters weren't communicating, so he didn't know about the wedding till a little later on. Until now, I was occupied with itches, issues. After lunch, I am moving along to your request. I will write a special letter. My regards to you and your groom. Praise to Hashem Yisbarak that you have already got out of the red paradise, Larienta, which he means Russia. So here he wrote like two different um, notation letters. Okay, now he continues. Dear Itcha, Parshat Achremot. So what Achremot Kedoshim, I forget. It's in the summer. Dear Itcha, I received your letter today in the morning and I immediately started looking for a bank and I have dealt with it until now, till two o'clock. So they say that they haven't received your letter and I didn't succeed in convincing them that you sent it registered and by Avia Post. They have not received it. So I'm not sure what communication was going on here. And if there were no money restrictions from Japan, they would have sent the money to Shanghai immediately in my presence. But otherwise, they cannot transfer. If only they had a printed request from your side, and only then, based on the request, could they allow the funds to be transferred. Therefore, for a start, I ask them not to send the money back to America. And they are advising you to go to Shanghai Special Bank and tell them all, and they will pass your request, meaning the letter, to the Special Bank in Colby. So it's not really clear what was happening here. Then be a Special Bank to Shanghai where everything is going to be settled. You have to go to the bank in Colby and tell them to deal via the Special Bank in Shanghai. That would be better. It seems that they were trying to get them some kind of money, and it wasn't working out so 
easy. But in my opinion, you need to find out regarding the money how the Special Bank of Shanghai will pay you, probably in yen. Dear Itcha, please make clear to me why you don't listen to my advice and you don't go outside from your room. It seems that my father maybe wasn't going out enough. How good a home could ever be is just a room because you don't know how long you will have to be in Shanghai. Special regards from Hannah Rudinsky. She will write more Yeshayahu. It seems that my father maybe wasn't feeling well and he was in his room and he was trying to uh, cheer him up. This is very unclear. This whole letter with the money, I haven't really been able to figure it out. Um, now this is another letter from Shiley and uh, he's obviously very um, <laughs> giving them a lot of uh, advice the whole time. Okay, so here is the other letter, postcard, okay. This is also from the same friend of my father's from Japan. Um, to honored and dear as my own soul, Mr. Itcha, he's writing to <laughs> I received your postcard just yesterday. I have been thinking about Basha and you. You've just brought yourself he's upset with him because you haven't written to me the whole time but it's all right and I'll forgive you thank Hashem that Basha is feeling better so here I get a little bit of a hint that maybe my mother wasn't also you know feeling well um, I am writing to you for the second time because I am coming we are Amir Hashem on the 17th of September coming Customarily, we are coming on Friday and the Rebbe Shlita is also coming with the family not sure which Rebbe this is. Rebbe Mordechai Schwab was not in the list, but the wife Schwab, she got through. Could be that they are also coming. It is in total 123 persons staying, and 201 are going. This is already a liquidation of the local committee. Uh, four persons and three must go. Their names are not on the list. It seems like slowly, like the Mary Yeshiva, they came, and then there were all these individual people I think they still were having a difficult time uh, about getting there. There are three members of the Jewish Agency list. Um, the certificates would probably be taken care of already in Shanghai. They write all the time that they have not yet arrived. Dear Itcha, listen to a story which happened with the Aguda. On Friday a telegram arrived to the committee with the following texts. We are sending a certificate for Yehuda Katz. He is a ma. Oh, so he's saying that he's not really an Aguda Nick, okay? And it looks like he was among the Aguda people and they put him on the list. If I would have had the money, I would have right on the spot wired who he is, but there's no money, dear itch. The agreement for your. So that he wrote that somebody got on the list and he wasn't supposed to be on the list. The agreement for your house is about to end on the 1st of October, and I think you should outright rent a room for us. I am very much weakened and do not have any koach. And again, I wonder, I am trying to imagine how your home looks. From whom I read the letters, he writes that at your home to prepare a place for me in you if you have not by this time rented a room. In other words, he was trying to get my father, I think, to find him a place to stay. At this moment, I haven't yet brought anything for you because I am waiting for a postcard from you that it should know what to buy. Send your post back, your postcard and I am flying to pack the stuff because they are taking the luggage next morning. If it's possible that a telegram should be sent to Eris Yisrael, I will with all my might look after it. What you propose, should it be added to Vechter, which I don't know who that is, but first I think it has already been sent. But second, it could also be taken care of this way, even when it's not clear what, what he was writing here. And they will surely have the certificate. And cordial regards, and very soon on Friday morning, we'll see Emir Hashem. We will, Baruch Hashem, discuss everything. Regards to Basha, Yaska, Chana, Yetel, your faithful Shaya. 
more until the trip, I will not write, because then he was leaving. So he was very um, running around and trying to help and trying to, to get things organized. He eventually came to, to Israel, so I don't know exactly if he went straight from Shanghai, because a lot of people, some went, most, a lot of went to America, we know Rabbi Briskin from Mir who went to South America, and some people, like my mother's good friend, Hannah Freyden, who was a teacher, she also went to Israel, why eventually I met her. Did your father have a contact with him? With he was obviously in touch with him when he was in Israel, because when I got married in 73, I somehow my father him. found him, and he <coughs> came to my wedding. But then, as I say, we didn't take these things in a, seriously enough, and I didn't keep up with him. Okay, now this um, is in, in May 1941. This postcard is from Hannah Garfinkel, my mother's very good friend, who I met her, and her two little girls are in this Beisiakov picture. This is Shalamis Garfinkel. Koplinski, and this is Sarah Garfinkel Landsman, who if you look in the flight and rescue book, yes. a lot of the pictures she lived in Silver Springs are from her. She passed away unfortunately. So these are the two Garfinkel girls that attended my mother's Beis Yaakov. And this is her mother writing to my mother in Shanghai. Dear Basia, I received your postcard. I reply to you instantly together with Dvairi. I never figured out who she is. Now regarding a special issue, and here again we start with the different permits. There were two lists with permits, one with 200 Bliyayin Hara and the second with 10. Eventually the second was taken care of. As for the first list, somehow some of our girls suffered from it. One of them is Sarah Wia Aronovich. Chaim Shaya's sister, Yaakov Taman's daughter-in-law. She is in the list of the 200, and her name was, was mistakenly stated as Rabinowitz instead of Aronovich. I am asking you to investigate this issue urgently and to correct it as soon as possible, because she is among those who are in great danger. Umisha Yavin Yavin, whoever mm -hmm. understand. She is with a recommendation and for sure will get a visa in Moscow. You have the list of the girls. Check that there should be no mistakes in their names. I am sure you will do it for me. Check that Pearl Aronovich was not thrown off the list. And if yes, pass the information to where it be belongs. Lastly, my cordial regards, Hannah. Now this makes me feel, not feel sense, that maybe some of the girls were still stuck even in Russia and they haven't even gotten to Japan yet and they were still trying to get different lists going and there were still mix up and as Shaila Leandro wrote, this one was on the list, this one wasn't, he tried to get on this list. So it adds more to the mystery but it's not, uh, makes it a little clearer but not a hundred percent. Okay, this is another letter from somebody else, a uh, Devari Cohen that I, I don't know, all the other people I knew. Um, this has, uh, this is letter I think is from two different people. Here, this is the original. And here also, here you could also see how she made use of, you know, the outside. This was in May uh, 1941. Dear Basia, both your postcards were received. We very much wonder that for the K girls there were no permits yet. Need to try about that. Wasn't clear. We'll write to the Rav Shlita. We have got a telegram from Vilna that we need 10 Shanghai permits. Do not give the Rav a break until he gets this done. So here I'm not sure this was already in 1941 how they were still trying seems that there were some people that were still trying to get out of Vilna to still go to Japan to follow the route that they took all these months later. Uh, the girls are in a dire state. Everything was taken from them, all things from the committee, 
like bets and all other things. They were left with only the four walls. They have no sources of income. Do what you can. We from our side will write. Wrote to Basha Bender regarding the money. She will probably send some. But I believe that someone needs to go there personally to influential people and get them interested. No news at our end. No affidavit has come yet. It's in progress. We and the other children are all Baruch Hashem healthy. I send my regards to the Safrins, Yenta Rubel, and all the others. Basia, why do you write to me so pessimistically? Write exactly why so many from there coming to you. Tvari, I would add, be healthy and brave, you are Chana. So it's a combination of Chana Garfunkel and from this woman Tvari. Now this is sent from Kobe, Japan. And this is like very interesting because here it seems like some people got stuck in Vilna, in Moscow, still trying to get people certificates to get them out. This is way after Sujihara has already mm -hmm. left. Sujihara's visas were, were given out in July, um, August 1940. Here so we're like so almost a later. whole year later and people were still there and stuck. And um, Hannah Garfinkel, she got out. She was a, she. We have here pictures of her children in Shanghai, but these other people, I'm not really sure what happened to them. And then we have. Oh. Okay, this is the other part of the letter. Now this was 18th of May. Shalom Rav to your dear Basia. Your postcard was received. Um, everything is being taken care of immediately. I'm trying to see. This is from this Devari. In the coming days we are writing a letter to the Rav Shlita. Send the address. Basia to our joy. Taibo Sharashevsky has just arrived in Japan. So you see there are some people that in 1941 were still trickling cool. into Japan. It's very interesting. Um, Bashka uh, is still sitting in Vladivostok, Basishka. She does not have the U.S. visa and can travel. And the same story, just like Tybalt's. Maybe she'll arrive with a ship, then I will notify you immediately. Further, I am asking you, please write. How do you live? How is the life in Shanghai? Ask Yenta. She should write to us too. You see, everything in your life is, a, is of interest to us. For me personally, there is no news. We are waiting for the affidavit. If it arrives in the coming days, probably we will be taken care of. Our best regards to Yenta, the one who got married, her groom, to Bluma Hellman, and to Hannah Garfinkel, and to your groom. So here they know already that my mother um, is probably getting mm -hmm. married. Yussel sends his regards to every, everyone. Stay well, yours, Tavari. And I don't know who that is. That's the only person mm -hmm. in all these letters and everything that I haven't figured out who she is. And there are not too many people that are alive that uh, I could ask. Okay, this is from Rachel Kravitz. I think it should be... Yeah, there's like two... Here's the original. There's like two different parts to this letter. So first she writes, um, this is also from Kobe. Um, a relative of the, dear Basia, a relative of the Chafetz Chaim is coming. Please take good care of her and help her to get adjusted. We are also coming soon, Rachel. That's Rachel, um, Kravitz, whose husband, Mendel Kravitz, was a Rosh Hashiva in, in RJJ. On the second transport, I will take care of Harav Zipperstein. The letter has come today, and all the luggage has already been taken. And there's Rav Zipperstein, his two daughters live in Israel. This is also from Rachel. Dear Basha, Shalom of Racha. I wonder why you are not writing I have written a couple of postcards and no reply. Why, I don't know. I was trying to do do for you whatever I could. There should be visas because Hannah is on the Canadian list. And one kind of put Yenta there because she's not a Polish citizen. Uh, I think you should prepare now 
as much as you can. I think that we will see you next month. Then we will know who it worked out better. So here you see there are still people that are not sure where they're going. Regards from us, you have surely welcomed Haraf Zipperstein. I am very interested how they arrived. Why no news? Seems like some of the postcards were not getting getting to the, the her friends in, in Japan. Uh, I heard that Yenta Rubel, Rebs and Manus got married. So Yenta, I wish you lots of happiness. You should have the merit. If not, bait neman l'ashem l'toratol b'har tziyon. Right dear Yenta, how it is going for you? How do you feel in the role of a married woman? In general, I would have loved to see you all to talk and recollect Nebuch about everyone in the international boarding school. Cordial regards to your respected husband, even though I don't know him. I am finishing my writing and I'm expecting a reply from Basha. Cordial regards to Hannah Rudnitska and everyone sends you regards, Rachel. Regards to Arab and Rebison Sipperstein, Rachel. Okay, that's the last postcard. <clears throat> okay. This is really, uh, and, uh, and it's been amazing because here you actually are reading history. This is your history of your family. It's right. So even though it's, it's added a lot, there are still, unfortunately, so many questions that are very hard to figure out um, exactly what was going on with their working um, in Vilna and the connection between the families, which was amazing. And um, what was happening with all her friends that were still in Japan the, these six months is very confusing. And I haven't really figured out exactly that some people were still stuck, some were still in Vilna all the way in 1941. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure that they even got to Japan, what happened to these people. And there were still these certificates. I think that some people were still trying to get to America. And... Um, Everyone was working to try to help everybody out. But what I find now in reading all this for the second time now, or the third time, is that they were actually asking uh, my mother in, in Shanghai to help them out, like with getting things ready and certificates and, and making sure that the lists are in order. So I'm not clear how much... Um, they seemed that they had some kind of influence on what was going on with all these certificates, which is very interesting. And to think that people were still in Vilna and not taken away to ghettos and were in 1941, almost a year after Sujihara left, and were somehow still trying to get to do their route. They were still trying to get to Japan. Very interesting. Gee, it's amazing. But you know, can I just ask, where were these letters all the years? <clears throat> these letters were in a few different white envelopes in a drawer like this cupboard in the china closet in my parents' house. They were just sitting there. I don't remember ever seeing them. My mother never mentioned them. She never mentioned, you know, we have these letters and that we would go through them, even though I don't know. They would have been able, at this point, to read them, because some of them were a bit faded. And all I could say is that Baruch Hashem, that we, nobody threw them out. I mean, you know, you go see a whole Baruch bunch of Hashem. things like this in an envelope. They look at these old, um, yellow, burnt out letters. I'm sure the, the color was very different at the time. And um, I think it was actually my sister that found them first and she found them and it was thanks to my sister who had them photocopied in a very very high resolution she has copies of all these letters in this resolution in America and okay that's where it ended she got up to that point and then she started not feeling so well and she stopped being so active in this and I said okay next time I came she didn't let me take um, these but she let me take the originals, um, a little half-heartedly, I think, but she gave them to me. And then I started looking for someone to translate them. Finally, we found someone right here in Avedaniel on the Yeshuv, who 
knows many languages and he's not even Yiddish speaking, more German but Yiddish, but enough that he was able to do this, to translate these letters, which some of them, and in some places, we have a few blanks that I tried to fill some of it in because you just couldn't, um, uh, you couldn't read it. It was blotched out or was written very, it was, some of the writing and some of the letters is very faded. But more or less, he got the gist of all the letters. So he, um, he did it for me, as I'll show you now maybe again, how I organized it. Um, I put the, uh, the photocopy of the original letter, the, the, post, the postcard side with the address, and the actual, the other side of the postcard. And I have it written in, in English. And on the other side, I had him type up the Yiddish. Because I wanted to have also the Yiddish. For example, my sister's children, they actually like to read the Yiddish. They like to see the more original, so to speak. And uh, it was a big project. And then I organized it into, into this and, album. And when you read it for the first time, it must have been extremely emotional. Right. right. Especially that very first yeah. letter from my father's uh, father, you know, saying how much they, they missed them and they didn't get to say goodbye to them and we hope to see you. And what's so interesting is how all of them start the letters that we are fine and we should just continue this way. And, um, and I, as I said again, how back and forth the connection between the, the two brothers and my mother is unbelievable. And they're all saying regards to the Saffron brothers, regards to the Saffron brothers. How are they, that the families really knew each other, were really concerned about each other. Which, um, way back, I never realized that my, uh, my mother's family and the two families knew each other that well. I, whenever I used to tell the story at the beginning, I used to say that my father learned in Australanka and Yeshiva, which he did, because Australanka was a much, much uh, larger town. And that, and, and from learning in, uh, in Australanka, he knew one or two of my mother's brothers. And that's how afterwards, when they got, came across each other, they knew each other. But I never realized how much, when they all fled to the um, east, how much they were ended up living very near each other, and how both families knew exactly what was happening. And, and, and in that first letter, how he writes that you've been through Minsk and Moscow and Vladivostok, he knew the whole route. And imagine in the Moscow train station, they're writing a postcard to Slunim, letting their parents know where, where they were. And, and how in a few of the letters, how they thanked them how we thank you know, my father's father thanks them. We told you to write it. You really, you you know, you lived up to your promise, and you really continued to send us letters, and we really appreciate it, and continued to write. And you see how my mother's brother didn't give up. He said, "We haven't received that many letters from you, but I'm running to you every day that hopefully you'll get one of the letters." And <laughs> how jokingly her sister says. I'm wishing you a good uh, a kosher in Pesach. You'll probably get this postcard way after Pesach. The Israeli mail. Yes. <laughs> well, I mean, she tries to cheer her up. You know? This was during the war, and you, and the mail was still going. It's, yeah, it's amazing. It's right. Unbelievable. And and also now when I reread everything, you really see how they probably did have some um, more depressing times and difficult times. How he writes that my father was in his room. That maybe he wasn't so strong physically and that it was very difficult the whole journey that they took and now my sister's my sister my mother's sister is cheering her up why do you sound so depressed so that she was probably also having a hard time and you can get more from my mother's uh, sister's letters a little bit how she was really missing home and really very very sad that she was so far away and she's trying to comfort her she's in Poland and she's trying to comfort her, cheer up, you know, everything will be good. You have to hope that Hashem, that everything will, you know, work out for the best. Well, <sighs> this has anyway, been Anyway, thank amazing. you for listening to me and on this so journey. <laughs> and this is such a beautiful heirloom to give to your family. These are treasures that are invaluable. 
And we can send these uh, thank you so these, much. Uh, videos to the family. And thank you, Les, for pointing out the even more important aspect of these letters and perhaps I will take your advice and have it you really printed should. up somehow yeah. and next time I'm filmed perhaps I'll show you the book. <laughs> Thank you so much. <clears throat> My pleasure.